Trash. Hello everyone. I'm so happy we're back with a video like this. Get your popcorn ready. Get your patience ready. It's gonna be a long video. But it's gonna be a good video too. I quickly have to say something. Because two weeks ago I announced that I will be having a concert in September. My first ever concert. And the tickets were sold out after a couple of hours. Which was already crazy. And then a couple of days later we upgraded the venue into a bigger one. And then the tickets were sold out very fast again and i just never know what to expect with my music i mean i know this people they are listening to it but like people seeing me live is like a total different story so i really didn't know what to expect so this like really blows my freaking mind oh and to everyone who didn't get any tickets it might be my first ever concert but it might certainly not be my last ever concert <laughs> i am planning a tour for next year and maybe also an album which makes sense and now let's get into this video yeah so in this video i will be testing and trying every single makeup brand by a drag queen not only the makeup brands also the makeup collabs with another makeup brand yeah that's why this video is so long because it's all in one video <laughs> i don't think i have to explain to you what a drag queen is i think my community is well aware of that but i do have to say that all the drag queens in this video that i will be talking about and that will have their brand in this video are obviously RuPaul's Drag Race queens. So if you don't know RuPaul's Drag Race, I'm sorry, okay? I'm sorry that you're living under a rock. It is a competition in which drag queens compete against each other in many different challenges such as fashion, music, singing, dancing, everything, performing, all of it. It is on Netflix so if you want to watch it, go ahead. But if you have no idea what I'm talking about and you just click this video for I actually, I don't know why you would click this video. <laughs> then don't worry, I'm gonna give an introduction to every single queen in this video. A little bit of their background, a little bit of their career and what they're all about. Actually, RuPaul's Drag Race is gonna be coming to Germany this year. There's no date announced, but they have asked for applications and stuff. And I'm a little bit, just a little bit salty that they haven't asked me to be a guest judge. I'm not gonna be too bitter about it. It's <laughs> not like it hurt my feelings that they didn't invite me. <laughs> <laughs> and quickly one last thing before we get into this video i just want to say that i'm not a professional makeup artist you know i say it in every video just making sure that you all don't think that i think i am <laughs> this is just my hobby but you know i really love makeup so i take it kind of serious so let's travel back in time and start with our first queen, with our first collab which is the anastasia beverly hills x Alyssa edwards palette Alyssa Edwards was on season 5 and All Stars 2 of RuPaul's Drag Race and since then she starred in her own web series Alyssa Secret and in Dancing Queen which was a Netflix docu-series that follows her highly competitive dance company. Overall you can definitely say that she is a fan favorite and probably one of the most known queens from the franchise. In May 2019 she collabed with Anastasia Beverly Hills to create her own palette and it retailed for 45 pounds oh in the uk love it retailed for 45 dollars but nowadays you can actually not buy it anymore because it was a limited edition you can maybe buy it on ebay but i myself can say proudly that i bought it back when it came out and i still have it <laughs> but i have the confession to make that i didn't even know Alyssa edwards back when the palette launched for me it was just a fun colorful palette i was like yay abh we and I also have to say that I didn't use this palette that much. I just don't remember using it. Definitely the last time that I might have used it was four years ago. So there's not many memories that I am recalling from this palette in my brain right now. So this is what the palette looks like. This is what my palette looks like. She still looks good. Can eyeshadow palettes expire? I'm going into this mauve pink shade and I don't know actually what I want to do. I'm thinking colors. <laughs> I'm thinking maybe some kind of cut crease. I do want to like go out with most of these looks because obviously I'm testing drag queen makeup. I'm not going to create a drag makeup look for 
every single brand but i do want to create a look next i dipped into the actual pink shade and i have to say on the eye it literally looked the same like the mauve shade maybe slightly different but they really are very similar now we're gonna darken this look a little bit with this dark mauve shade and honestly guys i have to say that i really enjoy doing this so far i'm not having troubles with any shade this black is also really good it's very pigmented i don't have to use much but you do have to admit that the old school anastasia beverly hills palettes they were they were always good except maybe the subculture palette which i also didn't mind that much like everybody minded it but this one really reminded me of the modern renaissance palette just with crazier shades now i'm thinking i'm gonna create a crazy cock crease shape because i'm not like the other girls now of course dipping into the yellow i'm gonna basically set my crease with it but only like in the front part this yellow is so pretty it is a very good yellow now i'm basically just blending everything going into the white so i set my little devil horn whatever that is and that is actually where we make a little cut i'm gonna finish the other eye first of all and second of all we're also gonna get to another brand by another drag queen to finish this look doing a little remix to finish this look we're going in with mo beauty by mo heart mo heart was competing on the 10th season of drag race all-star season four and UK versus the world. They appeared in a number of web series produced by World of Wonder, hosted their own podcast, Ace of Hearts, with Monique Hart, that was their former drag name. And in January 2019, Mo released her debut single, Brown Cow Stunning. Their own brand, Mo Beauty, launched in July 2021 and also first launched as a skincare brand only. But then eventually they also released makeup products over time. The website is cute. I do really like the product pictures and I also didn't have to pay taxes or shipping, which I think is really cool. In general, I think it's one of the lesser known skincare slash makeup brands in this video. I also didn't know it before I filmed this, but I'm very excited to try it, especially the dragon makeup mask. I'm using the regenerating most stunning mask. Most brightening. Category is my elegance shines brighter than yours. <laughs> Hello. She is wet, wet, honey. I don't want to rip her because this is a mug. <laughs> that looks like the lips of um I'm like a bird. Yeah. My lips look like a beard. Oh, this is so soothing right now. You can even see the redness of my face through it. <laughs> I didn't, I don't, where, where's my nose flap? <laughs> it's, it's not holding on your beard. This is wasted product. <laughs> that is creepy. Honestly, I think it's really cool, this whole system. Like, why did no drag queen ever do this before? Let's take a pic from her heart. <laughs> Stop it. How freaking genius are these masks? I don't care what they do. I love them. <laughs> I do have to say they felt like a normal sheet mask to me. They were hydrating. I didn't get a rash or an allergic reaction or anything, which I'm always very happy about when I test new skincare. But now let's actually get into the rest of the makeup. They have a skin brightening serum, which I'm going to use. And I do have to say that I was quite thrown off by the amount of product that was in there. It's not really full. I'm also very scared of trying new serums because my skin often reacts. <laughs> it's very red, but believe me, that's normal, I think. I'm just quickly gonna do my foundation basically with a concealer at the moment because it's the only thing that matches my skin tone apparently. And I'm using the sponge by Mo Beauty. I would say it was a bit more on the softer side, so depends on what you like. You, Mimi, I'm first. Mimi, I'm first, was number third in the voting. I could not believe it. Now I'm gonna apply the world's smallest powder. I can't believe how tiny this is. I'm actually gonna dip into it with my powder puff and then like press it into my skin. I'm kind of skeptical using a pressed powder because I usually use loose powder, but it looked really good. <laughs> this is gonna be a cat papa. A cat papa. Are they about to kiss right now? Next, I'm just super quickly finishing my lower lash line using some of the pink shades that I used before and I'm also dipping into this golden kind of shade and applying it on my inner corner which didn't really do much the yellow kind of swallowed the gold next we're gonna go in with an eyeliner by Mo Beauty and you know 
what I am. But you know what? I kind of liked it. Not the best eyeliner that I've tried. It was kind of hard. I do not like it when eyeliners are hard. I do like them to be a little flexible, but I was definitely able to work with it. Next, I'm gonna put on the more Beauty Lashes, which do look very promising, very fluttery, very wispy. I'm just not used to wearing a lash that is not my own Melody lash. <laughs> but you know, I don't want to be that girl every time that's- If it's not my lash, I don't like it. No. <laughs> Oh, it's a cute lash. It was cute. Next, I'm going in with the Gimme Mo Glow All Over Cream Highlighter. And I did have some issues pumping out the product, <laughs> aka it did not want to come out. I pumped my life away. So eventually I just took the whole thing out and just applied it on my hand. When I applied it on my cheeks, I really thought, wow, damn. Melody, use your mouth a beautiful highlighter because it was like a little bit oily and just really gave you that natural beautiful glowing from within kind of glow but when i looked more into it i realized that as it is kind of oily it really disrupts your makeup base and i hate when highlighters do that when liquid highlighters just kind of ruin what you did underneath so i realized this is maybe not a highlighter you want to apply after you powdered maybe then it's gonna work better i also did the mistake that i applied it on my inner corner which was at first very cute but as it is so oily i really had some issues in the long term <laughs> because it started really like creasing my makeup around my eye and like my eyeshadow and just kind of got crusty and greasy it was not cute like you really have to know when to use this product i think it can be very very gorgeous if it's maybe just applied on skin that has not much product on or just a teeny tiny little bit of foundation that is not powdered just have in mind that it is very oily and it can destroy your makeup finishing this look with the set it up setting spray i don't know how to judge setting spray it was setting spray <laughs> Unfortunately, I just wore this makeup for filming a video, so I can't really tell you about the longevity of it. But what I can tell you is that the powder was actually really, really good. I don't think I've ever been that mad for such a long time. Usually I get oily like after like one or two hours, but that face was matte. I think it's the powder. Uh, maybe it's also a combination of the powder and the setting spray. Maybe it was also the technique of the powder puff, like pressing it into the press powder and then pressing it into my skin i don't know but it worked i thought the powder was gonna be bad because it's so small and like you know but never judge a powder by its size overall love the abh palette i think it aged great i don't have anything bad to say about it maybe they should bring it back in stock yes Alyssa, i'm getting you that coin <laughs> all right mo beauty is a very interesting brand i think they have potential i mean they're still quite young and i feel like there's still some issues that i have with it the pump not working or the product not being filled up to the top it's just some minor things that i personally um, didn't like but i think it has potential like i i like the vibe of the brand and i really like the masks <laughs> the next one on this list is a very popular one that I, of course, shall not miss. And it is Trixie Cosmetics by Trixie Mattel. Trixie Mattel was competing on Drag Race Season 7 and is the winner of All Stars Season 3. And she actually has a lot of projects, such as her own documentary, her own novel, a podcast, a TV series called Trixie Motel, and even her own motel called Trixie Motel. <laughs> oh, and of course, I shall not forget her iconic web show with Katya called Oh. Trixie defines herself as being the only drag folk musician and has released four studio albums to date. Oh, and she also very frequently uploads her own videos on her YouTube channel, so I would also consider her a YouTuber. Trixie's first venture into the makeup industry was actually a collaboration with Sugar Pill Cosmetics called Oh Honey. But in early 2019, Trixie launched her own cosmetics brand. Or Trixie Cosmetics. Trixie Cosmetics is definitely one of the most successful companies to be founded by a Drag Race contestant and they also distribute their makeup on Beauty Bay. But Beauty Bay doesn't have all the products that I want to try for this video so I did end up ordering from their website and I did end up ordering a lot and I did end up paying $75 for shipping. <laughs> yeah they do sell their makeup on Beauty Bay but what does it matter if they don't have the juicy products? But I do have to say their website looks really cute. I mean it's 
pink it's cute i love it also they have a huge product range so i'm super excited to finally dive into it i haven't tried any trixie product to this date i mean guys first of all everything is wrapped individually neatly beautifully and then just look at all of this cute packaging i'm just obsessed with trixie i mean i just love everything that is pink <laughs> it's just i'm just so easy to impress <laughs> I also bought this brush set and I'm gonna be using the brushes throughout this whole video. Used the stippling brush on my foundation, which didn't work. I don't know why I thought it would work. <laughs> and then first we're gonna go in with this cute little cream blush. In the shape of a heart. Oh. That was really cute. But I do have to say that the formula wasn't my favorite, even though it's in the shape of a heart. Like it was not super creamy. I think it was a little stiff. Could have been a bit softer. Now I'm gonna go in with the Katya palette, which is a collab that Trixie Cosmetics did with Katya. Katya is also a fellow drag colleague. The lovable Russian hooker from season seven with a crippling anxiety problem. I love Katya so much. But I have to say it's kind of funny the way it looks because obviously it arrived completely new in the packaging but it looks like somebody touched that black and maybe even somebody dipped with the finger into the gold i think it looks sus is this normal nonetheless that's not gonna stop me from using this palette i thought maybe i'm just gonna go into the brown the brush was gray i just I, it was very easy to work with the eyeshadow and the brush i went into all the different brown shades basically and also into the black and then i decided to kind of do some kind of halo eye and also some kind of cut crease but only in the center so yeah a halo eye <laughs> just quickly cutting that crease in the center and then just setting it with this white shade which is not completely white it's kind of like beige i just don't get shades like this like just make white then i thought why not go into wait what is this shade called shaboshnikova and i thought why not blend it on this cut crease and like upwards but still leave a little bit of the white of the beige. beige but somehow that did not work as planned and just did not want to blend that nicely i don't think it would the eyeshadow i think it was the way i did it like my technique it was just overall nothing that i've ever done before you know i'm also learning okay <laughs> so i'm basically just removing the pink again and reapplying some concealer and reapplying the beige shade blending everything onto my lower lash line and also basically giving it the same effect with the halo eye and the pink in the center and then going into the silver shade and applying it on my inner corner and this was wow but i mean i also applied it on a dark underground because i applied the black then i realized i accidentally bought these lashes twice <laughs> Oopsie. i think they look okay yeah i think they're doing what they're supposed to do but i'd have to say i like the Mohart lashes better now i'm gonna dip into the super cute little blush palette I dipped into both shades. This was very pretty, very gorgeous. I loved it. The only shade that I didn't like super much love was the highlighter shade on the right. I'm not quite sure if it was supposed to be a highlighter shade or more like a shimmery blush shade because it is after all a blush palette. So I guess it's supposed to be a blush and it's maybe just a little topper. Now it's time for the iconic pink Trixie lips. Well, not quite. I'm not gonna do her lips because it's gonna look absolutely atrocious on me. But I'm gonna do my own interpretation with this lipstick, which is just apply it on the center and then blend it out with my finger. Then we have the Calami Gay Lip Gloss Collection. I bought all of them. And I'm going in with this kind of red, but still very sheer lip gloss. And I really like this one. <laughs> this is such a pretty lip gloss. I love that it has like the softest little red tint in it because it's making your lips look more juicy and more alive and plump. This is actually my new favorite gloss. I wear this all the time. I even took it with me on an event and then I accidentally dropped it and then it broke. And now I don't have it anymore, but I think I'm gonna buy it again <laughs> and this is my Trixie cosmetics look honestly gorgeous i know the eye look is a little bit of an accident like i really had to fight but just with myself it's not about the palette that's just sometimes what happens if you try out something new Trixie cosmetics is solid literally the only thing that i didn't like that much was the cream blush but it was also not like it was bad Trixie cosmetics it's it's good it's super 
great. Next, we're gonna look at Miss Fame Beauty by Miss Fame. Before Miss Fame competed on Drag Race season seven, they were actually a model and makeup artist working together with Path McGrath. They also had a format on YouTube called Painted by Fame, where they did the makeup of several celebrities and other drag queens. But looking at the YouTube channel now, it seems like Miss Fame doesn't do that format anymore, but they're not that active on YouTube anyway. I actually used to be obsessed with Painted by Fame. Miss Fame also launched a music career in 2015, really releasing a single and debut album, but they don't seem to make music anymore. They created Miss Fame Beauty in September 2018, and apparently they also sell their makeup on Amazon. The only thing I was surprised by is the product range. They have a few glitters, lipsticks, a skin illuminator, and a palette. I just thought they would have more products by now. But I could also imagine that Miss Fame is like super picky with their products, and they have to be perfect, and that's why they only have not so many. I don't know, that's a theory of mine. I paid $12.95 shipping, which is okay. And let's get into the makeup. I'm gonna start with the skin illuminator, which looks really interesting because it's like very like pudding and a little bit pink, as you can see. The only thing I was quite surprised by is that this costs $32. This really like hit the fan. I also have to say that I didn't really like it that much because I applied it, but it didn't really want to show up. It also disrupted my makeup base underneath. Well, I literally just talked about it that I hate when that happens. Can you see that actually my whole blush like on that cheek area is gone because I applied the illuminator? I don't understand. He is just me applying it on my hand to see what it looks like on a blank canvas basically it just didn't give me life especially for that 32 dollars it was supposed to give me life well let's dive into the under my skin palette which is a very crazy palette for my terms first of all because one shade fell out <laughs> and then another shade fell out. It's not magnetic. Like they're supposed to be stuck in there, but they're not. I mean, at least they didn't like shatter. They just fell out. You can glue them back in. I'm not like freaking out, but it's just why. <laughs> but I actually wanted to tell you what is so crazy about this palette because it is a all shimmer palette. There's no mattes in there. It's just shimmer shades. I'm supposed to create a look with just shimmer shades. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I was up for the challenge. So we're just gonna go in with the dark blue shimmer shade. But be careful because you're gonna get a lot of fallout with these ones. Like really, really dust the brush beforehand and make sure there's not that much product on there. Then I did go in with the shade and... <sighs> It was very, very, very hard to blend. And it makes sense because it is a shimmer shade, but I just don't know what I'm supposed to do with it. Like, am I not supposed to blend it? Ooh, I killed this shade. Ooh. I literally don't know what it is about this palette, but I feel like she's cursed or I'm cursed. We're both cursed, I don't know. Then going in with this lighter shade, on my lid. I don't know. It also kind of applied a bit patchy and it didn't like give me the shimmer that I did want in that moment. It's such a mess. Now we're going in with this dark shimmer shade. I love that I'm always saying shimmer shade as if there's also not shimmer shades in there. <laughs> this was very pigmented but also very powdery. I took way too much product on my brush so I had so much fallout and the problem is like this area was kind of like not that powdery anymore because I applied the skin illuminator so the fallout kind of stuck to the skin illuminator. <laughs> But I think I was able to work with the black shade better than with the other ones because this one actually like gave me some pigment and something. It was still very hard to work with because then it was so much pigment and these shades are not easy to blend because it's shimmer shades. <laughs> Maybe it's me and I'm just not capable of working with shimmer shadows like this. All I can tell you then is that this is not beginner friendly or it's just not good. I just can't believe that it's not good because I know Miss Fame like knows their makeup like they know what they're doing they're super professional so all i can think right now is that i'm not able to use it the way it's supposed to be used but i also wouldn't know how else to use it let's just carry on with the lips i ordered this lip set which consists out of a lipstick which kind of looks like something sinful i'm a good christian woman honey i have nothing to say to that and the glitter but first we're gonna apply the lipstick it's a very intense dark red it's super super creamy and 
almost glossy. I wish I had a lip liner with this, but I kind of made it work with a lip brush. But this is definitely a gorgeous shade. It's very like hydrating. Then you're supposed to add the glitter on top, which I was very excited about. And you can just dab it on because the lip product itself is already glossy. So you can just stick it on top. And damn, this is a pretty glitter. <laughs> I just always forget how pretty glitter lips are. I never wear them because they're kind of like not comfortable and just not very handy. But when I have them they look so good maybe it's a bit of a weird combo with this eye look I mean maybe it's a weird eye look in general because I totally fucked it up it looks so bad but the lips are very very gorgeous do you like my makeup I like the hair they don't look bad who's they the lips oh the lips are the best part oh but I think it's just a little too much color going on in general that makes it look clowny but the eyeshadow is just the star of the show but the hair I think is great could. Thanks. <laughs> Give me a cookie then. Thank you. So yeah, Vincent's verdict was it's not that bad, but I just still have to say that the eyeshadow palette was 100% not for me. The skin illuminator was not for me, but I did really like the lip product and the glitter. Yeah. Let's carry on with Bomo Beauty by Bob the Drag Queen and Monet Exchange. That's actually our first and only makeup brand created by two drag queens and also by two besties. Bob the Drag Queen won season 8 of Drag Race and after Drag Race she pursued acting, appearing in several TV shows and in 2020 she also began co-hosting HBO's Emmy winning show We're Here. She also has a podcast with Monet Exchange who was on the 10th season of Drag Race, the twinner of All Stars 4, which which means two people won and runner up on All Star 7. Monet Exchange had her own web talk show, The Exchange Rain, and she is a staple for many drag race related domestic and international tours. Her favorite cartoon is Avatar The Last Airbender. It's not related, but I just thought taste. In February 2023, they created their makeup brand Bomo Beauty. So it's super fresh and new and still a baby. I absolutely love, love, love both queens, but I do have to say, <clears throat> the logo and the brand design, it's not really for me. <laughs> but I love the video that plays when you go on tour their website. It is such an eye catcher. It is so cute and so beautiful. I just want more when I see this. I want to like check the makeup out. That being said, they literally just released a palette. The Pretty Funny palette, which consists of eight shades and costs $39. Oh, which is quite a lot of money for eight shades. <laughs> but let's Let's see what that palette can do. As you can see, it's like two palettes, but as one, like they're connected with a sticker on the back. It's not super handy, to be honest. I understand the concept, but I'm still wondering who's pretty and who's funny. <laughs> Let's go in with the blue, with the color set up. I'm just gonna create kind of like a smoky moment. Very happy to be diving back into matte shades, to be honest. <laughs> and this blue was gorgeous. I honestly thought it's gonna be a bit trashy. Shame on me for having this prejudice but that's probably because of the logo <laughs> i'm so sorry i'm dipping into this dark blue shimmer shade and honestly this was so pretty mm, it looks so good it is such a pretty blue shimmer shade <laughs> then dipping into the black out of the pretty palette and just darkening everything and then also dipping into this light shade out of the pretty palette for my inner corner you know i love to highlight my inner corner and i also did not expect this to be that bright i just repeated everything on my lower lash line to give it a whole look and i am very actually impressed <laughs> by the eyeshadows i didn't think it was gonna be bad but i just didn't think it's gonna be outstanding you know it's hard to make an eyeshadow that is like wow because nowadays basically all eyeshadows are good so i was still very impressed by this because it was not only pigmented it was also very blendable and easy to work with i'm a big fan of this palette just not of the design we're actually gonna carry on for this makeup look and we're gonna get over to another brand to finish it off let's carry on with suckless face and body by willem belli willem belli competed on the fourth season of drag race and she's known for being the first queen in the show to ever be disqualified for breaking the rules she is also an actor having played in several different tv shows movies and web series and she also released three albums mostly consisting of parodies of popular songs I still remember that boy is a bottom like it was yesterday. This boy is a bottom. 
She also still regularly posts videos on YouTube and her most successful YouTube series is Beatdown, where I personally also appeared once. What the fuck, bitch? Her brand, Suckless Face and Body, launched in September 2019 and their product range includes glitter jellies, lashes, and liquid lipsticks. They do ship internally, <laughs> they do ship internationally, but I pay $24 for shipping. I personally never heard of this brand before, even though I do quite like Willem a lot. But I also have to say, I'm not super obsessed with the products that they sell, just like the product type. I'm still gonna get into them. First impression is it's giving a little bit of about face, but like, wish. <laughs> it's real sunny up here, but I do like a little bit of... Shade. We're gonna apply these blue lashes to my BOMO look. I mean, they're kind of like drag lashes. I am not the one to wear drag lashes in my usual everyday makeup, so I'm probably also not the targeting group. Then I went in with these individual lashes, and first I tried to apply them as a whole, and then I cut them into little pieces and glued them on individually. I don't know, I had a hard time with these. I don't know why. Now I'm going in with this glitter jelly, and I'm just gonna apply this as my highlighter. I it was kind of cute, but it didn't wow me. Maybe it could have been a bit more glittery, but you know, it isn't. now I'm being nitpicky. Let's finish this look with the lip varnish, which is a liquid lipstick, but it's kind of shimmery. It has a little sheen. Not a huge fan of the packaging, to be honest. It looks kind of cheap. And also there's like the sticker on there, like the suckless sticker is basically already coming off. And the lipstick itself it was very, um, special. The color itself was already very interesting, but the lipstick, it was just so sheer and so patchy. And because it was kind of like shimmery and had like little glitter specks in it, it was especially patchy. It was actually so bad that I couldn't leave it like this. And I had to go in with the BOMO palette, like the black to just outline my lips to give it some definition. And then I thought, why not apply some more of the glitter jelly on the lipstick? But it somehow it does also just made it worse. Kind of just made the lipstick even more patchy because the glitter jelly was also liquid and like it just rubbed it into one whole clump. <laughs> Bomo palette, very good, very great. I'm just very excited to see what they come up with next, what other products they're gonna be because I feel like an eyeshadow palette is kind of the safe option, let's be honest. Like if you release a makeup brand and your first product is an eyeshadow palette, you know, you're safe. I want them to do more. I wanna see cool makeup, innovative makeup. Give it to me, Bob, give it to me, Monet. Suckless, I feel like is a little, how do I say it? Maybe lackluster. I don't know what to really think about it. It's like, okay, the lashes, okay, they're lashing. The lipstick was really bad. It didn't give me anything, it kind of also had a cheap feeling. Yeah, I'm not super, super excited about this brand. I just had a little pasta break at 1 a.m. <laughs> I was hungry. Lick yourself or something so I can carry on. Next, we are gonna have a look at Kimchi Chic Beauty by Kimchi. Kimchi was a contestant on Drag Race season eight and she describes herself as a seven feet tall live action anime character and high fashion model. And I personally love her drag so much because she also experiments with makeup a lot and she always creates bomb ass looks and is super creative. And can we quickly talk about the fact that before she named herself kimchi her name was snape princess that's so upsetting a couple of years ago she had a successful youtube show called mug but nowadays she focuses on performing live and on her makeup brand kimchi chic beauty kimchi chic was released in october 2019 and is also a huge makeup brand nowadays with a product range from a to z is that how you say that in english sounds very wrong they also have many distributors such as beauty bay douglas boozy shop camera ready cosmetics it's a lot I freaking love their website and product design. It's just super up my alley with all these pastel, cutesy colors. To be honest, some of their makeup products are already a very important part of my makeup routine. <laughs> I have several palettes, concealers, a liquid highlighter, and most importantly, the freckle pen. I use it in every single one of my makeup, basically. It's just the best freckle pen that I have discovered. But for this video, I decided to test completely new products to 
see if all the other ones that I haven't tried are also good. I ordered from one of their distributors, but I decided that wasn't enough. So I also ordered directly from their website and I paid $55 shipping and $30 taxes. <laughs> yeah, they have some makeup on Beauty Bay, but it's just not the products that I want. <laughs> and what would this video be if I wouldn't do at least one full-on drag look? I thought it really makes sense with Kimchi's makeup because she just has so many products. So I can really like do my makeup from top to bottom. And I am literally going to do everything. I'm going to glue down my brows and I'm just going to go full-on drag. And I'm also going to be inspired by a Kimchi look. After I glue down my brows, I'm going to go in with the F and Primal. This is just some pore filling primer i would suppose but it was actually also a little hydrating so it's maybe like a mix of both i think it was good now going on with a really good foundation and as you can see i'm going to apply a lot because it is a drag look i'm gonna cake it on it's not necessarily my shade as you can see but that's not a problem because i feel like drag queens never apply foundation shades that are their shade. <laughs> Going in with the concealer, that is a product that I have used before. It's very good. I love this concealer, but it is very full coverage. It is perfect for this look though, because I can lighten my foundation a little bit and I can cake it on. Going in with the concealer in a darker shade, I'm gonna do my contour. It is very dark, but that's what we want, believe me. It looks rough. I know, it looks very rough. This is not my normal makeup routine, okay? This is my drag makeup routine, honey. <laughs> Using the Puff Puff Pass Translucent Powder, I'm gonna set my face very intensely. There's also a powder puff that came in the powder, which was good. Now we're going in with the Holy Fairy Tale palette, which has <laughs> such an interesting color range. It just looks so crazy. This is the look I'm gonna get inspired by. And yeah, I'm just gonna go in with some of the shades. I really went in with a lot of shades, actually, like basically all of the green shades, all of the blue shades. I just made it all very green and then I cleaned up my cut crease. Then I'm gonna apply some more of the kimchi concealer on the cut crease to cut it even more. Then I'm gonna set it with the white out of the palette. Put on like in the front area, in the back area, I'm gonna apply this baby blue. I realized it was not blue enough for me, so I went in with this kind of turquoise shade. Yeah, you see what I'm doing here. It's just very back and forth very much blending very many different shades it was very good it was very easy to work with yes i had to apply it into my eyebrows so it's kind of like not very pleasant to apply there next going in with the fn liner which is kind of this ink liner i wasn't a big fan of the brush itself it was a little chunky for me it is really good for if you want to paint big areas that's for sure because you have a lot of product but if you want to go a bit more deep detail and a bit more delicate then this is not for you because the tip is kind of like big so i think this is perfect for like thick drag liners but if you just want to do an itty bitty little eyeliner this is not for you now going in with diamond shards which is some kind of glitter eyeshadow uh, i also wish i had applied this on my lid a little bit because uh, it was just not enough down there i think it had potential to be way more than just this now using the really good mascara which honestly <laughs> i don't know how to give you great feedback for this <laughs> i also bought this kim browley micro brow pencil you guys know me you know that i'm not a big fan of these types of brow pencils this is such a difficult task drawing on an eyebrow from scratch on your forehead. I swear to God, I always struggle with this whenever I do it. I feel like my first attempt is never good. Like, look at the brows that I'm drawing. I don't know why I still thought I could save them. I went in with this eyebrow powder because I thought maybe if I blend them a little bit, but you know, I just realized this, I just cannot leave them on like this. So I wiped them off completely and I drew new ones on, which were still not perfect, but definitely much better than the other ones and next i'm applying the super bish lash which is kind of big honestly maybe already consider this a little bit of a drag lash because my 
look is already a lot, but you still think these lashes are a lot. <laughs> I like them though. Ooh. Going in with a super cute little heart blush, which has like separated blushes in it. Honestly, this was very pigmented. I don't know if it maybe was a little too pigmented for a blush, but then again, it was very easy to blend out. So I think it was actually really good. Now going in with the Pearl Gone Wild Highlighter. Uh, I wasn't a huge fan of this one. When I applied it with the brush, it didn't really show up that well. It did when I applied it with my finger, but I'm sure it wasn't cream blush. It was definitely powder blush, but it has kind of a weird consistency. And I don't know if I like the end finish of the highlighter. It seemed very just glittery instead of shimmery. I just like my shimmery highlight. Going in with some glitter shards, and this is basically also a little wet glitter. It reminds me of the Denessa Myricks glitter. I topped my highlighter off with it. Next, I'm going in with the black lip liner. And I realized it's actually not black. It's like a dark burgundy, which, uh, oops. <laughs> I also ordered a brown one, so I just switched over to the brown one. I just really didn't feel the dark burgundy one. The lip liners are great. Now I ordered something really crazy, which is this lipstick in a mint shade. Well, actually it's not mint. What is it? Is it turquoise? Teal, right? Is it teal? Light teal? I don't know, man. It didn't really fit the lip look. I'm gonna be honest but that was the lipstick i ordered i don't know what naomi is thinking when she orders this sometimes i hate her <laughs> but the lipstick itself was good very pigmented and then i realized i actually forgot the most important part which were my freckles <laughs> but you can actually see them now that's the kimchi chic freckles they actually don't look that good right now <laughs> never mind i'll just back up and this is my finished drag look. I wonder what we should name this drag queen that I created right there. Who is this? Give me my drag persona. Comment in the comments down below what her name should be. But after all, I have to say, I loved everything that I tried. So fun. Right? Would you go out like this? Maybe um, a gay club. Yeah? Yeah, for sure. This looks very cool. Thank you. I just don't like the lips. Oh, and I almost forgot. I also bought this cleanser, Rice Rice Baby. And I just wanted to see how much of my makeup it removes. Obviously, I already removed my eye makeup, but like my face was still caked on. And then, you know, I just tried my best removing it. Had a little bit of a breakdown because it was very messy. <laughs> Not for the eyes. <laughs> but I have to say, it's definitely not your only cleanser if you use this. <laughs> like when I went over my face with micellar water afterwards, there was still a lot of makeup on my face. You need another round afterwards. But that was kimchi chic beauty. Next, we're gonna have a look at NYX Cosmetics X Aquaria. Aquaria won season 10 of Drag Race and is known for being one of the show's youngest winners, with her being crowned at the age of 22. She's also an international fashion model and has been modeling for Moschino, H&M and MAC Cosmetics. In May 2019, she released her makeup palette with NYX Cosmetics, which I never knew existed. I was so surprised. The palette isn't sold anymore, which made it so hard to get, but I found it somewhere in the depths of eBay. As for now, I can't tell you much more about this collab, so let's just dive into the palette. Honestly, I'm not sure about the choices of colors. It's not bad colors, but it just doesn't look good in the palette. I'm gonna dip into this hospital green. It didn't give me like so much pigment at first, but it was buildable. And I don't know, I was thinking about some kind of different placement of the eyeshadow. I just wanted to do something new. <laughs> then I dipped into this dark blue shimmer shade, which was kind of crazy for me because I did not have good experiences with dark blue shimmer shades. <laughs> it definitely didn't give me that much pigment because it was indeed just a shimmer shade and not a matte shade, but it definitely did its job in terms of just darkening my blue. That is a... Uh... <laughs> Oh, you look so big. Now I'm going into this yellow and I don't understand this yellow. It's kind of a weird shade because it's not really a bright yellow, but I would think that if you create a yellow, you would want a bright yellow or at least a rich, deep yellow. This was kind of like nothing, <laughs> but I do have to say that this was also buildable. I just really had to go in with a couple of layers. Then I dipped into this 
silver white shimmer shade on my lid which was cute but nothing special now actually going into the black because i really wanted to darken everything the black wasn't also very super black i just think black should really be black 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 i decided i wasn't completely satisfied with the glitter on my lid so i also went in with the silver shade which was definitely giving me much more than the other shade and then i'm going in with the red shade as my blush oh i'm so crazy usually not a big fan of this type of orange blush but this looks cute now going into the white and highlighting my brow bone as i saying the white could have been more white it's just the black needs to be black the white needs to be white sorry guys i just chili was just there and he was being so cute and he just really wanted to cuddle but i don't know why he was sitting on this chair <laughs> oh, he's so cute and this is my aquaria nyx cosmetics look it's definitely a bit unconventional like the eyeshadow might be a little bit weird for some people like what i did there but i think i like it actually the eyeshadow palette itself was okay i think you can definitely work with it but you can also definitely tell that it's nyx quality which doesn't mean that nyx has bad quality eyeshadow products they could be a bit better but for the price range this is totally fine we're gonna carry on with be perfect cosmetics x the vivian scepter palette the vivian is a queen who won the first season of drag race uk and later returned to the seventh season of all stars she since has appeared in many different shows on word of wonder bbc3 and netflix and she also competed on dancing on ice setting her to be the first drag artist to participate in the show and she's definitely known for her donald trump impression I'm definitely not with jane in june the vivian collab with be perfect cosmetics to launch the scepter palette and the palette is actually not available anymore on the website but i was still able to get it on beauty bay i got it for 38 euros but it originally costs 45 25 euros which is still a very good price considering there's so many shades in there i actually never tried anything from be perfect cosmetics so this is also a first impression for this brand for me first of all i have to say that the palette packaging is just so incredibly ugly <laughs> i mean i do have to give to them that the point definitely comes across that this is a scepter palette this is royalty but not pretty but the inside looks very pretty all these colors and also you have this section on the left a huge black a huge white some kind of contour blush shades some kind of highlight shades Oh, that is so smart for the look that i'm doing i'm actually getting inspired by the promo look that the vivian had on in her pictures for this palette so i went in with the purple and the purple right off the bat was already very good then blending the purple out with the orange which is kind of crazy why would you blend out purple with orange it was definitely kind of hard to blend but i did manage to do it because i just got into the blending and it blended nicely in the end i just it just needed a bit more work okay <laughs> now going into the dark blue and of course giving it more depth in the crease on the outer part and then cutting my crease with a q-tip like i always do it at least now you really know how i always do my cut creases because i do them a lot in this video and then not setting the crease with anything but going in with this blue shade on the outer part and just blending it in like a little bit not too much because we want to blend in more colors going in with this super bright green blending this into the blue also not too much and then finally the yellow which was also such a gorgeous yellow especially after i tried the aquaria yellow <laughs> this yellow was so good and so rich and also so beautiful because it was not like a bright yellow like this but rather like a mustard yellow now i quickly did my base and i'm also gonna do my lower lash line going in with a a couple of shades that i already went in on my top lash line lid top lid lid just the lid <laughs> then of course my favorite thing to do a bright shimmery shadow in the corner of my eye and then i thought why not also go in with a little bit of this super glittery shade a tiny little accent on the yellow then i'm drawing a tiny little wing with the black out of the palette and i also like to do that so i can blend the lashes more easily we're gonna apply the blush now which is actually cute i thought this wouldn't show up because it's so light but it actually showed up going in with the 
bronzer slash contour shade which was definitely way too dark for my skin tone i just still wanted to try it but maybe i shouldn't have <laughs> too dark for me then the highlighter which was also very pretty and really doing its job that was this palette but we're gonna finish the look with a different brand again which is the collab between christian odette and gigi good gigi good is a runner-up of drag race season 12. following her appearance on drag race she was cast in the drive and drag concert series appeared in multiple music videos and participated in the savage x fenty fashion show in march 2021 she collabed with the makeup brand christian odette to release a lip product collection including two lipsticks one lip liner and one clear gloss i actually never heard of christian odette before but i also really love it when celebrities collab with smaller indie makeup brands i just feel like it has more soul and character and it just isn't so like commercial and you also know the person collabs with the brand because they believe in the products and not because it's such a big name but i do have to tell you that the lip products from christian odette are definitely on the pricey side the lipsticks each retail for 29 dollars and the lip liners for 25 dollars <laughs> i mean they are made in the usa maybe that's the reason why it's so expensive but they really <laughs> you can also only get their products on their official website they ship internationally but i did have to pay 16 dollars for shipping let's see what the lipsticks are like oh my god look i got an autograph by Gigi. here are my four lip products and i was thinking i'm gonna go in with the lip liner because it's uh, the only lip liner <laughs> and i did not expect this to be that dark it was very brown dark dark brown a bit reddish even but i blended it in a little bit and then i think it was okay and then i applied the nude lipstick and i think it was actually kind of a good combo very dramatic but it is also what i like to wear as you can see right now it is my thing so good on you Gigi. then i'm gonna go in with the clear gloss and i am very picky with clear glosses that's why i have to give this one a bit of a bad critique first of all there was just barely any product coming out like any product on the wand i really had to dip in a lot of times to get all of my lips coated and the wand definitely also didn't like slide easily on the lips probably because there was not much product on there but it was very like <coughs> and that is actually my look i personally am obsessed with the be perfect scepter palette just not the packaging it was a great palette it is a great price as for the gg good collab i think the lip products are also solid very good except for the gloss i had a little bit of things that i didn't like the lip products are solid they're great but i don't know if they are worth 30 dollars next we have something very interesting on the list which is the the super drug rupaul collection i don't really think i have to introduce miss rupaul in this video but i think i can summarize it pretty well with the term she is, she is the, the mother, mother of the drag. drag she is the most successful and influential drag queen in the us and probably also on the planet to be honest and she's obviously the founder of rupaul's drag race which by the way has received 11 primetime emmy awards as of 2022 but let's get to the lesser known part of rupaul which is this super drug makeup collection super drug is a uk-based drugstore and i find it quite funny that he creates a makeup collection to be only sold in the uk like Huh? It launched end of 2022, I think. And I feel like not many people actually know about this collection. Probably also because it is only launched in the UK and you can't even buy it online. This was probably the most difficult to get my hands on because the only chance to get some leftover products is if you literally travel to the uk and visit super drug drug stores and see if there's leftovers there but luckily i did actually find some of the leftover products on ebay uk and somehow i managed to get it over to germany don't even ask me how it was all a fever dream first of all the design do i have to talk about it i don't know <laughs> it looks very cheap but i mean it is a drugstore collection it's just not Pretty. going in with the all about me eyeshadow palette which is a very neutral and very boring palette <laughs> yeah i'm just gonna create a very neutral and boring eyeshadow look just like as a little
little something on the eye for the everyday wear, this will definitely suffice. I just don't think it is necessary. I think the shimmer shades were lacking, especially this gold shade that I applied. So I went in with the glitter shimmer eyeshadow in this gold shade. When I applied it, I was like, oh, maybe. And then I like blended it out a little bit and it blended into nothingness. So, you know, I just left it as it was. What can I do? I finished the eye makeup look, if you can call it that. And then I went in with the eyeliner, always very nervous. And uh, with this one, my fear was definitely reasoned because this was a very bad liner. <laughs> I actually had so much troubles working with this. It was so hard. The Mo Beauty liner was also hard and I was still able to work with it just as a normal liner, but this one was so hard to work with. It really sucked the life out of me trying to make this liner even. Next, I'm gonna apply the lip liner and I mean, it was okay. It was just not a good shade for me. Maybe I'm just also so used to always applying a darker liner, I don't know. Then on top goes this lipstick, which was a bit too dark for the lip liner, to be honest. Then I realized I also had this gloss, which I thought might actually save this look a little bit. It smelled like Bailey's. And then I realized that this is actually not a gloss, but a liquid lipstick. So that was kind of disappointing. Next, going in with the Who Is She <laughs> highlighter duo. I don't think I've tried a worse product in this whole video. It was so dry and kind of chunky and just not smooth, not creamy, nothing. nothing. Barely any pigment. It was just so so bad so so bad but that doesn't matter guys all that matters is that you're a star baby don't worry i have one last remix for this look we're gonna try one more brand which is unicorn skin cosmetics by acid betty acid betty competed on the eighth season of drag race and she's definitely one of the more creative expressive queens and she also plays a lot with makeup and special effects in may 2018 she launched launched Unicorn Skin Cosmetics, which is probably one of our smallest brands in this video, but still a very interesting one because they sell biodegradable glitter, which is apparently glitter made from plant-based film, which means the material is derived from the fibers of eucalyptus trees. They guarantee it to be 100% safe for the environment and the oceans. And I think that is actually such a cool idea and such a cool way of making a product all sparkle zero guilt but i do have to say their website is a bit on the glitchy side i really had some struggles checking out i had to reload the website a couple of times and i paid 28 dollars shipping but i mean it is a small brand they don't have a distributor i'm just glad i was even able to order it internationally so let's finish this ugly RuPaul look with some glitter. I'm first gonna apply some of the glitter base, which is apparently also made from aloe vera. It had such an interesting consistency. It literally just felt like aloe vera. It didn't even feel like it's gonna make something stick. Then I applied this biodegradable glitter. It's like some kind of fine glitter and a bit like iridescent or I don't know what, what it's called. It's a bit green, but also a bit white and a bit pretty. Fun fact, I'm actually wearing it on my eyes right now. They also have this product, Unicorn Skin, which reminds me of the product from Suckless by Willem. I would say it's just a bit more glittery and I mean, it's biodegradable. Hello. <laughs> I also have to say that the Suckless Glitter Jelly, it burned a little bit on my skin when I applied it and this one didn't. And then I had one last product, which are these paper lashes. Yes, Acid Betty has these paper lashes on their website. Many different kinds of paper lashes. And this is the one that I bought. It looks so crazy, right? I mean, just the fact that they sell something like this, I've never seen anything like this before. And honestly, this is what I think of when I think of drag makeup brand. This is the innovation that I want. This is crazy. This is new. This is exciting. It is maybe not wearable for everyone, not for the everyday wear. It depends on what you wear every day. But I think this is so fun. I think this definitely saved the RuPaul look. This gave it something. This is not very comfortable on the 
nice. I do have to admit. I think it's still so, so cool. And the fact that the lashes only cost $20. I mean, yes, it's $20, but these are probably handmade. I love them. In terms of the RuPaul makeup, it's so freaking unnecessary. I feel like it was just a cash grab. I hope he grabbed some cash with it because we definitely did not grab any good makeup with this. That's funny. Tell another one. I can understand why nobody knows about this collection or nobody talks about it about it and not even RuPaul himself talks about it. Meh. But I'm very happy that I found Unicorn Skin Cosmetics because the glitter, amazing. This whole biodegradable thing, amazing. The lashes, amazing. Just very happy with this brand. And that, my friend, is this video. These were all of the brands that I'm gonna test today. Those are all of the brands they are, right? Or is there any other drag queen brand that I missed? But to be honest, there was way more than I expected. I literally thought, like, going into this video, it would just be Trixie Cosmetics, Kimchi Chic, Miss Fame Beauty. That's literally all I knew. I love trying all of this because it was definitely way more interesting than just trying, for example, celebrity makeup brands because obviously drag queens, they do know more about makeup here and there. But there also were a couple of disappointments. Miss Fame Beauty is such a pity. I just wish I could like it. Suckless was also not my thing. The RuPaul collection... Ooh. Trixie and Kimchi were, as expected, really good brands. But my personal surprise was the Unicorn Skin Cosmetics by Acid Betty. Also the Be Perfect palette from the Vivian. I wish they would make more. I mean, I could probably just buy more from Be Perfect without having the name the Vivian on it. I w probably won't. <laughs> Tell me what you think of the brands down below. Tell me what you think of the drag queens. Of course, I'm gonna give away all the products that I've used in this video, except maybe one one or two or three that broke or that actually went into my daily makeup routine now. <laughs> Literally just comment down below who is your favorite drag queen and comment your Instagram name, but don't like comment. My Instagram is at mm -hmm. maybe just like write it at the end, your name without the at. So YouTube doesn't recognize it as your Instagram name because sometimes YouTube deletes comments like this. And that is this video. It is now 3 a.m. and I think I should go to bed. Don't forget to follow me on all of my social media, which is Naomi John on Instagram. Naomi John on TikTok and the Naomi John on Twitter. Oh yeah. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in my next video. Good night.